Yo, it's Wednesday, my dudes, and this is my personal review of Destiny 2's Season of the Chosen. As background, I, uh, I consider myself primarily a PvE player and not a particularly good one. I barely got Conquer and have no desire to guild it. I only PvP when my friends are there, or it's a quest step, or there's a gun I really want. I enjoy Gambit, but I don't enjoy Gambit bounties or having to do specific stuff in Gambit. But I actually like the game mode when it's just played for the game mode's sake. So that's me as a player. Feel free to disregard any opinions I have based on that. Generally, when I think about Season of the Chosen, now that it's the final week of it, I enjoyed my time a lot. Uh, it's I think it's the most enjoyment I've gotten from Destiny 2 ever, I want to say. Uh, I started I played Destiny 2 when at launch. It I had three months of fun and there was nothing else for me and I moved on to other games. I only returned a month before Beyond Light, which was the tail end of Season of Arrivals. But I didn't know anything about seasons and stuff. I was just playing the game and I fell in love with it again and here I am making content for it. <clears throat> I'm doing this off the cuff, looking at the roadmap now, and immediately Battlegrounds was an infinitely more engaging seasonal activity than Wrathborn Hunts, which seemed very arbitrary in its execution. Whereas the Battlegrounds had like proper integrated story content that was presented in a way where you don't have to go see a Bife video every couple of seconds just to know what you're doing. Because the story is actually in the game now somewhat. Uh, Battlegrounds was very enjoyable for me. I enjoyed trying to get hammer charges and stuff like that. And trying to focus my umbral engrams. The Umber Engrams, they do drop a lot, and they populate our Engram slots very quickly, and like it's just another thing to inventory manage that could be done more gracefully, I would imagine, because deleting blues after everything is uh, annoying enough, but personally, like doing inventory management in in the middle of missions is kind of sort of there's a therapeutic element of like just deleting things you don't need and stuff like that but i can see how other players uh might see that as annoying uh yeah the battlegrounds itself was really fun there was much talk about enemy density and the consensus being that it was good for the game i highly agree uh, it did introduce a lot more teleporting phenomenon in terms of enemies. I mean, it was there before, but it's really noticeable now. I know Bungie is doing a couple of engine updates. I'm not a software engineer or a game developer, so I don't know what's happening over there. But from time to time, teleporting enemies really, really do become <laughs> a part of the game you kind of play around almost it's like uh, to properly immerse yourself in the game you kind of sort of have to look away from that kind of stuff and because i play destiny 2 so much i have trained myself to look away but that's definitely not something that it's not a feature it, it will never be a feature teleporting enemies are it's a bug and it should be squashed the strikes was really cool to me. I never played Destiny 1. Devil's Lair is probably my favorite strike now. <laughs> Again, it's the enemy density thing. It's there's uh there's a couple of history things. I feel like I am uh in the thick of it. The grandmasters and the masters level of Devil's Lair was really enjoyable it, it was really fun completing these this strike uh which is not something i would say about the other uh strikes 
that opened in Season of the Chosen. Uh, Fallen Saber was... The rhythm of the higher level versions of Fallen Saber is kind of weird to me. Like, it's, it's definitely not a straight push kill enemies and murder something. There's uh, there's a couple of mechanics that you need to pay attention for Fallen Saber, for example, like how to not spawn uh, enemies. And you have to pay attention to like the timing of the plates. Oh, sorry, the timing of the, <clears throat> the ticking up of the plates before you spawn enemies. It's very counterintuitive and it doesn't really say that you shouldn't be on the plate all at um, all the time, right? But that might be intentional from Bungie's part for the community to develop kind of sort of unspoken uh, strategies like that within the community. Uh, it is something that Destiny 2 <clears throat> is unique, or and that can be extrapolated to like Bungie itself with its past titles like Halo and stuff like that. There's a bunch of secrets. Um that's kind of sort of community driven in its discovery so you can't really i can't really get up in arms about that about fallen saber proving grounds though that was a that was a thing like the easy versions was uh it was fun it had a good story atmosphere is good i would say masters is probably where proving grounds is the best feeling Grandmasters is just extremely punishing for not a lot of rewards in uh, comparison to the other Grandmasters, I would say. Like, Devil's Lair and Fallen Saber, for the amount of trouble you go through a Grandmaster version of that, it feels worth it. Proving Grounds is just something you do to get Conquer that season. And I don't think that should be the intention for any kind of sort of like tippy top uh higher level content like you shouldn't it's not like something you want to do once and never again because that's what proving grounds is to me and devil's lair and fallen saber isn't that so i actually want to run Dev devil slayer and fallen saber the grandmasters but not proving grounds the helm itself as the seasonal um, new location. It's functional. I got nothing else to say. Holograms of the character speaking to us in the helm table was kind of cool. Um, I was disappointed that Drifter didn't have lines about encoding umbral engrams and how that's just uh, a thing now. <laughs> That's acknowledged by the Vanguard, but whatever. No big deal. So something not on the roadmap, but was a very pleasant surprise, was the Presage mission uh, that was sprung up in like early parts of the season. That was really great. Again, in a, in a completely bungee move, they hid the initial quest step in the nightfall of that uh of the week which is the arms dealer it makes sense i guess it's a cabal focused strike or whatever but i think us destiny 2 players we've built a very strong suspension of disbelief where these strikes happened and they happened another way and then they happened another way and this version of the strike just had a secret door open to get this distress signal from the Tangled Shore when that wasn't a thing in vanilla? We have a strong, very strong suspension of disbelief. I didn't bat an eye, honestly. I'm complaining it right now because I'm thinking about it critically, but at the time, it was just a really fun quest step. The mission itself was very, very, very cool. I think, and I'm not saying that I've played every game ever or I'm an avid horror fan, movies, games, whatever. Actually, I'm not. But I really, really enjoyed the kind of sort of creepy, spooky atmosphere of Presage. It's really great. And there should be more missions that's aiming towards telling an environmental story 
like Presage did, uh, not necessarily um, shooting things and asking questions later. Uh, whereas there's a lot of shooting in Presage, a lot of anarchy shots at the boss and stuff like that. But I think Presage is the perfect combination of environmental storytelling and combat. And that's probably the high watermark if Bungie for Bungie for Bungie's that's probably the high watermark for Bungie's seasonal mission creation soon. But at the same time, uh, I want them to kind of sort of experiment with other things. Perhaps again, not a game developer. Perhaps they can find an even better combination that is beyond me right now. Presage, very good. More, please. More like that. The exotic that came with Presage was also very, very cool. I would have never picked up a scout rifle if it wasn't for Dead Man's Tail. And because of Dead Man's Tail, I'm picking up other scout rifles. It's It helps, obviously, because scout rifles is one of the featured seasonal weapons you can get anti-barrier scout rifle and uh mods regarding scout rifles are lowered there's even a scout to s uh, sorry there's even a scout and sniper rifle targeting combo which i'm sure everyone's using in pvp and i think that is probably the way if you are going to like introduce a new exotic uh, I don't agree with it having random roles necessarily. I thought that was unique to Hawkmoon, but I really do understand like um, I really do understand the the sorry, I really do understand the thinking behind how to get guardians to do a mission every week is to get a different version of a gun. Like just put a gun at the end of anything and we'll do it you know put a gun at the end of three wins on trials or like lose 10 times and we'll jump off cliffs for that igneous hammer you know and that's just the reality of the situation for Bungie the developers so they do stuff like random roll dead man's tail when it didn't make sense make sense for Hawkmoon probably not dead man's tail but what you gonna do like which is a good segue to PvP content. I said in the beginning that I am not a PvP player. I do not play for, I'm uh, sorry, I do not play PvP for PvP sake. I do play Gambit for Gambit's sake from time to time. I really enjoy that mode, but not like the traditional Crucible experience is not for me. Although the Iron Banner, um, the Iron Banner offerings was enticing enough for me to actually try and grind for tokens and weapons and uh, armor because I think the armor looks pretty cool. I main Warlock and the Iron Truage uh, chest piece is very epic on my Warlock. I really enjoy that. And so yeah, good job Bungie making me play PvP. <laughs> Um, trials wise, I never, I don't really agree with cliff jumping, but I'm not gonna s stand here and berate you if you do. You gotta do what you gotta do to get the gun you want. Um, but yeah, trying to actually play trials is pretty brutal right now. I mean, if the trials population was a bit more and there was a bit more, uh, like everybody of every skill was playing trials and it was truly random i think it would be more enjoyable it's just trying to get people to play trials is probably like an ordeal for bungie yeah so that's all i got i don't have any solutions obviously you can you can <laughs> you can listen to cami cakes or whoever uh for that kind of content but for me pve player trials got my gun that's it and the last aspect, and certainly least, was Guardian Games. It's my first Guardian Games ever. I got caught up in the hype. Uh, if anything, Guardian Games kind of sort of convinced me, not convinced me, but 
it kind of made me only play Warlock for the last couple of weeks. I was... I usually play all three characters uh, just to get the most rewards. Like, I didn't really identify with a main or whatever, but uh, Guardian Games kind of sort of solidified Warlock as that for me. Uh, class Pride is fun. <laughs> Gets toxic from time to time. I know in the first week, I've experienced not getting rezzed because I was a different class from whoever was available to res me and I have done that back. It's really fun. It reminds me of, you know, like class meetings where you compete like when you're in school and you just compete with other class or whatever. It's just stupid tribalism fun. But <laughs> three weeks of it gets a bit too much. <laughs> And like, the Hunters won, they have the most people, typical. Warlocks came in second, very sad about the Titans though, but I think they deserve it after last year. And that's it. Uh, did I get the seal for or Chosen? Yes, I did. Was it better? Was, was it worth it? Yeah, I think so. Like getting the seal this uh, season was a bit more fun than getting Warden last season. And the seasonal challenges that is adjacent to like getting the the title was also fun. I wish they gave out more bright dust, but I might be in the minority on that one. But all in all I did I did get the thrill of the chase emblem. Uh it's just a proof that I have no life. <laughs> and it was really fun. Um, so all in all, Season of the Chosen for me gets a thumbs up. Really had fun in this season. I hope Bungie takes the lessons of this season towards the Season of the Splicer. And I know they're looking towards, I think, the consensus most fun season, Season of Opulence. At some point, I really want my Firing Rage back. You know, the Tribute Hall? Like, just test weapons or whatever. I never got to experience that. I hope that comes back. That's just a random thing. Anyway, it's Wednesday. And I've been Wednesday. See ya.